and welcome to today's video of Justin Loves the Tech. Today, we are going to be putting together a NAS or network attached storage for under $300 with up to 6 terabytes of storage. Um, I'm going to have mine set up in what's called a RAID 5 so that I will have 4 terabytes of storage and if one, any one of these drives fails, I can throw a new one back in there and won't lose any data. So let's get looking at the parts. We are going to be using three refurbished uh, Toshiba 2 terabyte SATA 2 drives. These aren't as fast as the SATA 3 standard, but because we're transferring the data over a network, we're not going to max them out anyway. So to keep prices down, we're going with SATA 2. For a boot drive, temporarily, I'm going to be moving over to USB most likely, I have a 80 gigabyte SATA hard drive. It's not that important because all it needs to do is load what's on it into RAM and then it won't be used the rest of the time. Now, the motherboard I picked up is an ASRock QC5000. It's an ITX form factor board, so it's nice and small. It has a built-in quad-core AMD processor and it has built-in USB 3.0. It also has a PCIe 16X slot for later installing a RAID card to add more drives. It is very energy efficient. It takes up very little space and only has a tiny little fan, which it probably won't even need, so it'll be very quiet. I had this nice server case laying around, so I'm going to be using it so I can add plenty of drives later on. Um, you can go out and pick any case. Um, basically, any case will work for this. Just make sure it can fit three, three and a half inch drives if you're going to go this way. If you're going to use that, you'll need a fourth. But in here, it's got up to five fans right here, which I'm going to have all disconnected because this thing produces barely any heat. Uh, it has a 120 up front, which I have blue LED in, which I may have on because it's pretty quiet and it'll keep everything having a nice airflow. This is a iStar USA case, I believe, and I had it laying around, so I'm going to use it. In here, I have an iStar USA 400 watt power supply. I had this laying around too, but you can get this all under that $300. Um, it is a 400 watt power supply. You want something that's really low wattage. If you could get 100 watts with 80 plus gold certification, that would be about the best you could do. For RAM, I went with a cheap stick uh, Falcon DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM. It has to be 1600 megahertz as this motherboard won't take anything slower. If you have something faster, that works just fine, but you can't take anything slower. All right. Let's get started building. So, the first step of building any computer is to take and assemble all the components of the motherboard. Since this is the CPU and the heatsink already attached, all you have to do is open everything up and attach the RAM. So when you first open up the motherboard box, what you'll find is a little manual here. There will be a DVD or a CD with all of your drivers required to use it. You will have your SATA cables your rear I.O. shield, which makes it so there's only holes in the case where there needs to be, and of course your motherboard. This one comes with this one little screw. I'm not sure what it's for, so I'm going to read the manual for it in a minute. Don't be ever afraid to read the manual. If you don't know what something is, read the manual. Nothing wrong with that. Then down under this piece of cardboard is the motherboard itself. Take. Pull it out, you want to be gentle and you want to be wearing an anti-static anti strap. So right here you can see all of the rear I.O. connections. You have your little CPU, the heatsink and its little fan, your various connections for other things, your SATA ports, your PCIe 16X slot for expansions or video cards or whatever you may want. It comes with internal video so we won't need a video card. A place for your RAM to go and a few other little connections. This one here can support a Wi-Fi module, so you can get wireless there too. And whenever you're holding it, try not to hold it by the bottom. This has a little anti-static stuff, so I don't need to worry too much, but you always want to try and hold it by the heatsink or by the rear connectors. But you don't want to try and hold it, you want to make sure you don't hold it by any of the circuitry. You don't want to just grab it and hold it. So now we're going to take the RAM, open it up. Um, what you may find is a little manual, you may find a sticker, or just like this one, just a piece of paper and the RAM itself. So what you want to gonna want to do, pop out the RAM, hold it by the heat sink. If it doesn't have one, just grab it in the corners, but otherwise you're gonna want to hold it by the heat sink to keep it safe. Now, there is one slot where you should put RAM in before the other if you only have two sticks. Um, this case it's labeled on the motherboard, 
slot 1 and slot 2, so the first one goes closest to the processor and the second one goes further on this one. It'll always say in your manual, don't uh, feel bad if you have to look in your manual, everyone does at one point or another, so you can look in it. What you want to do is pop these slots open, align the little tab in the slot with a little gap in the RAM, gently slip it in, and push down in each corner. You should hear a clip on each side. And you've successfully set up the motherboard. Usually you'll need to install the processor and heatsink, but they're built in, so that's good to go. All right, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is prepare your case. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna install the hard drives into the case. We're gonna put the rear I.O. plate on, that thing I showed you a second ago. And then we're gonna put these brass standoffs that hold the motherboard off the base tray in the right place. So when putting in hard drives, the first thing you wanna do is remove all doors or covers. So this one has this front cover that opens with a key. And it had a top cover, which I already removed to speed things up. So you're going to want to take and install your hard drives. In this specific case, you remove these bays. They're held in with screws, and I already removed them to speed it up. There's that fan. And you're going to want to just install all of your hard drives. And you probably want to go in a pattern so that you know where they all are. Once all your hard drives are in, the bay will be much heavier, so just be warned of that. You're going to want to slip it back in if you had to remove one. Most cases you won't need to remove anything, but this one you did. So, slip it back in. We're good to go there. Okay, so now you're going to want to take the rear I.O. plate out of any packaging it might be in. Which probably is in some sort of packaging when you get it. You're going to want to open it up. Find which direction it goes in. Usually you can tell by the lettering on it. And then you're going to want to take it, rotate it in the right direction. Loosely fit it in there and then just push it in. And it'll just snap right in. Don't worry about getting it in upside down as you can easily pop it right back out and turn it around and put it in again. This one's a little bit of a tight fit. Just make sure that everything's aligned properly and push it in. There we go. The rear I.O. plate's in, the hard drives are in. Now we gotta take care of these motherboard stews. After taking a look, this motherboard needs a screw in the four corners. And looking at the motherboard, screws are already there and no extra ones are installed that could short out the bottom. So what you gotta do, you just get everything aligned, make sure none of these clips here are going to get stuck. Slip your motherboard on in, make sure the screws are aligned, and install the motherboard with the screws that came with your case. Now we have to hook up the front port connections. These are what attach the power button, the USB, and the hard drive lights into the case. If you don't know where they are, or where they go, um, you can usually look on the motherboard, and if not, don't feel afraid to look in your manual. So I'm going to start off with the power and reset LEDs. Um, for the LEDs, the power one is going to go right in the corner with positive on the outside. Then the hard drive LED is going to go on the other side with the positive or colored wire on the outside. There's also a little plus and minus. These two, it does matter which way they go in. Otherwise, it just won't work. It won't harm anything, or the lights might be backwards, but it, it's just not going to harm anything. Then you got the reset and power buttons. The power one goes in right next to the power LED. And these, it doesn't matter if you put them in forward or backwards. There is no right way or wrong way, because all a switch is is touching two wires together. The reset switch goes next to the hard drive LEDs. And all the other connectors work just like that. It's that easy. Now we're going to be giving power to the motherboard. Um, sometimes motherboards take one big connector. Sometimes they take a smaller connector. And sometimes they also need a separate big connector. So what you're going to want to do is hook that together, orient it the right way around, attach it 
Put, put it right over the motherboard, get everything lined up, and then just push it in. And you'll have a little bit of a rubber snap you may or may not be able to hear. And that's how you give it power. Well, we're down here, we're going to be attaching the SATA cords. This motherboard came with two in two different types. One has two flat connectors, and the other one has a flat and a right angled connector. The right angled ones I'd recommend to stick into the hard drive end as it makes the cables more neat and tidy. Since I'm going to be installing four drives, I'm also going to need two additional SATA cables. So if you don't have them already, you're going to have to buy them with the rest of the parts. These connectors are labeled 0, 1, 2, and 3. If you have anything really high speed or important, like a solid state drive, put them in the first connectors. Then move on to your less important, and have anything like disk drives be the last ones you plug in. So, in our case, we're just going to go ahead and plug them in. 0, 1, and 2, which are the equivalent of 1, 2, and 3 are going to be connected to our main storage devices. We're doing this because they're the most important. The hard drive will only be used to boot up the computer and then it won't be used again. So these three cords here will be for the main hard drives for our storage. Then we have this one other cord here which will be for attaching our hard drive to run the system to store the data when the power is off. Pop it right in. Got to make sure it's oriented the right way. These ones down here do have a clip, the ones that come with the motherboard. You got to push it in before you can pull the connector out. Otherwise, you'll break the cord or the motherboard or whatever you're plugging it into potentially, and you don't want that. Now what you got to do is take these and plug them in just like that, the same way into your disk drives whether it be hard disk drives or optical disk drives like CDs. That's what we're going to do next. I'm unable to film this, so we're going to have to go without seeing that. Sorry. So one thing to think about when you're putting in these cables is to make it so the first port goes to hard drive 1, the second port to hard drive 2, which will make it easier later on in setup. So now in just the way you attach the SATA cables, the data cables, you're going to need to attach the SATA power cables, which again, I can't film because there's really not enough room. So at this point, you're going to want to try and manage all of the cables so they look a little bit better. Um, it can be difficult. Zip ties often help. Um, and then that little screw I couldn't figure out what it was for, it's to attach a Wi-Fi module if you later on decide to down there. Other than that, on the hardware end, we're basically completed. The only thing left you still need to do is make sure all the fans you're going to use are plugged in. I don't have any attached to the motherboard. There's a strip up here with a power splitter. Um, once you got that done, you're ready to install the hardware. Links to all the parts I use will be down in the description below if you want to go check out what I use to make your own $300 NAS server. Thanks for watching my video on how to take a pile of parts and turn them into a NAS box. If you would like me to show you how to do the software end of this, leave a like and a subscribe, and I will know that you'll want to see how to set up the software too. Uh, if you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down, but if you just run around the internet hitting thumbs down, please don't do it. You're better than that. Come on. I would like to thank Missoula Community Access Television, a local place where you can go in and make your own shows and have them put on TV for letting me borrow their camera and microphone. Go over their channel with the link in the description or a little bubble right here. And check them out. They got over 2,500 videos, and it's really cool. Thanks for watching.